What's up commanders and welcome in part 6 of our vlog the Russian Empire as we are under attack from the Polish army composed of main battle tanks and motorized infantry. but our air force is in standby in Moscow and now going to attack those land units. In the first episode of this vlog we spoke about the importance of the Suhoi strikers in this game and what kind of difference it's going to make because Russia is a great empire, it's a big nation and really defending, uh, defending it from uh, foreign attacks and from other troops is going to be hard and the best solution here is to use the air force because they are so fast and especially when you, are, when you have airfields and airports all over the nation moving these uh, air forces is going to be easy and fast and like that you will have always you will have uh, the superiority the aerial superiority and also the land superiority because you see here these uh, main battle tank and motorized infantry under my strikers they will be so vulnerable and they will be destroyed so quickly this is our middle east front where i am uh, continuing to take uh, those remaining provinces and cities from Turkey and Syria and I need to finish those wars as soon as possible because I have a lot of wars now against other nations which is really bothering my morale. Now I am going for the level 2 destroyers. Of course I need to invest now, it is the good time to invest on navy because I don't know really because the Americans are advancing so fast and they have a lot of naval bases so yeah it's a good time to invest in navy. Let's follow here the assault of my air force on those Polish army and you see here in one single strike remaining only one uh, main battle tank level 2 with half of its health. That's, that's very good, one motorized infantry is destroyed in one single attack and the main battle tank now it will be destroyed in the second assault uh, those air forces now they only have uh, need the time to refuel in the aeroport of Moscow I continue taking the Polish lands now and put it under the Russian occupation of course the, under the reign of the Russian Empire advancing with my uh, mobile anti-air and motorized infantry and also uh, giving the air support with my Suhoi strikers. This is um, China pulling his attack on Serbia. I am going to follow this uh, war against China uh, between China and Serbia because it is so important for me because it is held uh, near my borders and it is so close to me and the winner of course is going to be a threat later in this game so I need to calculate my things and really think who will be my next enemy in this uh, game things are heating up of course a lot of other nations are growing so fast such as the Americans there which is Moscow has took all of the North uh, America also there are South Africa also took half of the African continent United Kingdom is expanding too so there are a lot of threats around me and they are getting bigger by time so I need to take care of them. So this is my eastern front from uh, Imperial Japan. All of Japan is mine now. Only the city of Sapporo and the southern city of Fukuoka. The game is advancing now so good as planned for sure. No surprises for now, everything is going as planned. My strikers are cleaning everything on their way, especially here in the central of Europe. After taking down Poland, I will have a lot of resources and especially those lands in Sweden. The Russian economy will be boosted up so fast that it will be good for us to make more and more strikers and of course invest in Navy. Yes, I have a good uh, production of components, but shortly and soon it will be so over overwhelmed. This is another attack from Polish armies, but they are separate main battle tank and motorized infantry. They are so easy to take down with my air force. I'm not even going to bother and send back some land forces because it's going to be useless. Two attacks or three attacks from my strikers is going to be enough to take these down so fast. I'm attacking already with three stacks from the city of Moscow. Let's advance now and take more lands and more cities. If we go to the city of Gomel, which is occupied by um, Poland, also the German cities of Berlin and Leipzig, 
which they are also under the Polish occupation. In conflict of nations, uh, Poland is so strong, they are given it seven cities, which makes it have a very strong and good economy actually. And yes, Poland always is doing very well in conflict of nations and all the time it's making problems and bothering me to be honest. One day I should try to play with Poland I guess. I never played with it before, I don't know why, but it is a very strong country but I never played it, play with it before. So maybe, maybe I will try to play with it in the future. These are the uh, Chinese land forces, which is composed of uh, main battle tanks advancing to Serbia, Serbian lands. Those are some provinces of Finland around me. Soon I will, soon after I finish Poland and uh, finish my war, especially I finish my war before engaging in another war, I need to think about taking down Finland. He is so close to me on my borders, and of course, we will re simulate the winter war in the World War II. I continue taking down those Polish units advancing to my city of Bosco. They will be down so shortly, nothing to be afraid of. Now, the Middle, the middle East is stable under my reign. I am advancing through the north of Africa through the Libyan lands. I need to control the north of Africa so shortly because um, South Africa is expanding from the south so fast. He is not finding no problem in expanding, he is not finding no uh, enemies there. So he is eating up the continent of Africa. And of course, the Americans, of course, the Latin Americans composed of Chile, Brazil, Mexico, they will be in Africa so shortly. So. The first important thing I need to do is control the north of Africa, make naval bases there and start uh, investing on my navy. Because fighting the Americans would require a lot of ships, a lot of destroyers, uh, a lot of vessels. So like that I will fortify my presence on the waters. And of course in the near future I will start making the naval uh, patrol aircrafts. They will be so deadly against destroyers, against submarines, of course. Their only weakness would be the frigates, because the frigates, they are armed with anti-air, which is so deadly. But that's why I'm going to do a combo of destroyers and naval recon aircrafts. In case I encounter frigates, I will, I will of course send my destroyers. In case, in case I encounter submarines, I will send my naval recon aircrafts. In order to pull that off and make this kind of army, I need to invest a lot of, about uh, a lot on components and electronics because these units will consume a lot of components and electronics. And in order to make that happen, and without finding no problems with economy production, I will need to annex more components and electronics cities, of course. And later we will choose what kind of cities we will annex. My strikers are cleaning those rogue cities in uh, Sweden, in Swedish lands, of course. After they will be cleaned, I will send my land forces to take them down, to claim them. These are the casualties of Poland against me. He have 13,400 casualties compared to Russia, who have only 1,000. To be honest, the war against Poland was so fast and so easy because he didn't really have like advanced armies, he didn't he didn't have an advanced navy, no anti-air, nothing. So he was so vulnerable and so easy against my Suhoi strikers. So let's have a look here, Hawaii is still under the United States reign, but look at here, Mexico have all of the United States, but Mexico didn't take Hawaii yet, it is so far from him, and I think he forgot about it or something, but Mexico took all of the United States, but not Hawaii, look at the diplomatic map, this is all Mexico, but Hawaii is still under the United States, which has fallen. 
So I, I think that Hawaii would be a very important city to take. Taking down Hawaii is going to make me so close to uh, Mexico. I will send some land units there to take for me this island. Later I will build a naval base or an air base, of course. Like that, I will be so close from uh, Mexico. Especially when I have the naval recon aircrafts, I will put them there in Hawaii and they will have the range to fly all over Mexico from the uh, island of Hawaii. So that's a strategical place and so important for me to take in case I am thinking to take down the Americans, of course. Because it's going to be a long way to sail from Russia to the American continent there, but having an airfield in Hawaii is going to make things so much better and easier. This is my capital Yekaterinburg, Volgograd, Voronezh, Moscow and St. Petersburg. Every city is producing troops, the production is 24 on 24 hours, no stopping, still advancing through the east now, take the remaining cities of uh, Turkey and um, Syria here through Pakistan, Afghanistan and India um, and India, yes But here Rogue state is bothering me all of those cities have turned rogue and sending separate infantry through these cities will be so exhausted fighti uh, fighting the rogue state and I really don't have now no air force in this region because all my air force is focused on the European front now. So yeah, it's going to be a little bit tricky. I don't need to uh, throw my infantry there in every city. I need to move um, carefully and let the range do its work against the rogue state. Let's control the desert now, the Libyan desert. And go straight to the north. You see here the cities of Tripoli, Misurata and Sirte, they are still under the Libyan government. They are not taken yet, so I will go for, uh, go for them. There are five cities there. It's going to be a good bounty for me, to be honest. Look at that. Four coastal cities and one inside, which is Nelut. This region, Algeria versus Morocco, they are eating each other. They are destroying each other. Soon I will start preparing some troops and some land forces for Finland because I said earlier I will try to take down uh, Finland so soon. I didn't attack him at the beginning because he wasn't a threat, he asked for peace from the beginning so I really didn't have fears from uh, Finland and as I'm mo monitoring his advancement in buildings, his economical advancement, he is not doing much, so that makes him vulnerable against me. I occupied the active players, I occupied the potential threats in the future, I took them down, such as Syria and their old coalition composed of Syria, Israel, Turkey, etc, etc. I took them down. I took down also Poland, which was expanding so fast and he, and he was um, preparing himself to take down all the Scandinavian nations starting with Sweden so yeah I intercepted him and stopping him there and took down all of his lands now after I took down the potential enemies I let China do his work against um, Serbia they are having a big battle there a lot of casualties also Serbia was a very good lad so strong so he really stopped China even though he received a lot of casualties and lost a lot of cities so yeah, let them be occupied there, it's not a problem. I will try to expand more and more and find other potential enemies. I am here monitoring the map, this is China, Vietnam. And yes, the Americans here, you see Chile has already landed in New Zealand. So yeah, now Chile is going to start expanding in the um, Pacific states and Pacific nations, such as New Zealand, Indonesia, etc, etc. In that case, they will be in Asia so soon. And of course, they will be a potential threat. As I said earlier, the Americans are a potential threat and they 
need to be taken down so closely. Cleaning these lands is taking ages to be honest. I don't have uh, a lot of personnel. Infantry is, I don't have a lot, so that's what making things so slow. This is the war I was speaking about between Serbia and China. This is the Russian Empire. My units are battling against Libyan defenses. In a short time they will be down. You see here I have a lot of wars against nations, which is so bad for me, which is so bad for my um, morale. I need to take them down so quickly, I need to clean these lands. It's so bothering me having a lot of wars at the same time. I will try to send this infantry to take as much provinces as possible. You see here the, oh, the rogue state is so annoying. It is blocking my advancement. See here, luckily I really intercepted him before I collapse and uh, collapse and make a contact with the rogue state. So yeah, the range would be useful here. Let's go to the city of Kunduz, Jalal Abad, Kabul. Level 3 destroyer now, the research. And now it's the time to start the research of the naval recon aircraft. It's so important. And of course, to be able to make them, I need the level 3 air bases. I already have the level 2 for the strikers. I'm not going to make a lot of air bases now all over the Russian Empire, starting from the level 1 and the level 2 and to the level 3. This is Yekaterinburg and go to air base level 3 for the recons. Novary Sibirsk needs an airbase here. Airbase level 1 and later on it will be level 2 and level 3. So as I said earlier I need to annex some cities. And the best place to annex these cities I've chosen Japan. Because Japan is in the center of the Pacific Ocean. It's going to give me a better presence and a better help because you see here in the Asian side I only have one isolated city which is Vladivostok. So making troops there is going to be so so like um slow, you understand? I need to annex more cities there in the Asian side and of course I chose to annex the city of Niigata, which is components, and later I will annex the city of Osaka because it is electronic city. I need the electronics so much because um, the naval recon aircrafts in the future they will consume a lot of electronics. So that's how I really try to manage my resources because I receive a lot of um, questions frequently. How Milio does? How do you? manage your resources, how you have a very good uh, components production, how you have a very good electronics production. So actually the answers are in this series because if you follow every step I make here you will really realize how I move and how my production, my resource production is so good because I always try to level up my arms industry so fast. Also I try to annex cities to boost up the required resources because here I don't use a lot of supplies so I'm not going to annex supply cities because I don't need them so much eventually I need components and electronics so that's what I am going to annex later and of course annexing a city you need a very strategical place and a very important place because you are not going to annex any city in the map you need to annex a very strategical position so later you can make troops in that city you can make air bases you can make naval bases like that you fortify your presence in that region you see, I annexed the city of Tel Aviv in the center of the Mediterranean Sea. Like that, I built a naval base level 3 and started making destroyers there to fortify my presence in the Mediterranean Sea. Now I'm annexing two or three cities in Japan. Like that, I'm going to make one city with 
air base level 3 to start making naval recon aircrafts and the other two cities they will boost it up to the naval base level 3 to start making destroyers also i need the naval prisons in the pacific ocean so like that i will make my russian empire so strong and so expanded through all the oceans in the world and of course in every war in every position in every area i will be uh, ready i will be present and of course i will hit so hard you see here i started uh, preparing my air force the russian air force near the finnish borders of course it's now the time to start preparing myself to start the winter war okay i will speak a little bit about the winter war as you know in the world war ii before the soviet union collapsed against uh, the german reich um, the Soviet Union really tried to take down Finland, but the Finnish people, they were so strong in defensive position and they really stopped the Russian invasion. So that is called the Winter War and it was the biggest defeat for the Soviet Union in the World War II, which really complicated things for, for the leader of the Soviet Union in that uh, time which was of course Joseph Stalin and yes that was a very crucial moment in the World War II they really gave an idea for Hitler to start expanding in the Soviet Union realizing that the Soviet army or the Red Army like was called in the Second World War the Red Army was then vulnerable and wasn't so strong and wasn't even able to uh, defeat Finland. So that really gave the idea to uh, Hitler to start expanding through the East. And of course it was a huge mistake. It was the biggest war in the history of humanity, the War of Stalingrad. So that was a brief lesson about history here and we continue our campaign and we continue our game now you see here in the diplomatic map in the orange color the Russian Empire expanding from the far east to the far west and to the far south here in the north of Africa the Middle East and going all the way to India that's the Russian Empire for you guys and yes we are continuing and we are going far and more far than that to expand our lands and fortify our forces and making the best air force and the best army in the game still advancing here through the Afghanistan lands and Pakistan also still fighting with the rogue state there and things are going as planned as I said earlier so this is the diplomatic map we see here Mexico is so big also Brazil and Chile he took down all the south all the south is occupied by Chile you see here Brazil have a lot of naval bases so their naval presence is so big this is also South Africa this episode will be finished here and in the next episode, the part 7, we will start our war against Finland and it is going to be called the Winter War, but in this time, Russia is not going to lose. See you, bye bye.